Hey there. Anyone that knows me knows that I have tried very hard to stand up for the straight white male demographic. I have really, really tried to work hard at that. What I've been just thinking about it, it just, just for the past like hour is, does a straight white male, uh, cisgender male demographic, do people in that demographic have, have the same fear of the gay community judging them. Hey there. I want to describe something and it's for better or worse. I'm just describing something that just is and something that is kind of part of human nature. And that's where some of the and I need to say too, I, I try to push against this in my mind because it is an automatic reaction. The reason why minorities, the LGBT community, will tend to not care, that, or seem to not care that much, about the things that the straight, white, cisgender males uh, go through. Now, this is, this is a truth. I'm not saying it's good. Um... I could say it's bad, but it's just the way it is. It's just the way society is. It's just the way that people work. It's just human psychology. Um, there are a lot of people in the LGBT community who have really went through some shit in their lives. What they've went through being gay. When someone's experiences are that far different than the expected experiences out of what it's pushed forth as if we're supposed to be, when it differs that much, you have to try to find a way to translate what you feel. Like, okay, if I'm describing something to, to friends that I know are obviously gay, and or when I if I'm speaking to those that are, um, they might be Christian. I'm... I have to word things differently. I have to think about the way that they they do things. I have to put a lot of thought into it because if I don't word it the right way, um, they're going to they're, something I'm going to say is going to really really offend them in a way that uh, it could could really hurt. And so I try hard to to word things in ways that show. That hey, I I I know what I I at least have a, a somewhat of an understanding of your mindset, and I want to make sure that I can communicate clearly. There's there's that type of thing that is different when you're when you're gay. You have to you you categorize categorize information differently. I talked about in a hangout uh, a, a, a bunto uh, a let's ask Kazoom questions hangout, and I had talked about how. I think a lot of what makes someone gay, there are things that we tend to have in common when it comes to the way we process information. This sort of thing, you know, uh, this sort of combination, because I mean, our, our brain is like the the way we process information. You know, some people, oh, some people are more right brain, some people are more left brain, some people, you know, the the configuration of that. If you could like look at it like a key or something like that, and I just picture looking at someone and, well, if we had this system that would know, you know, how to describe this, so you know, everyone has this picture of a key, has this key thing on their forehead. That, oh, this I'm this shape. This is what I'm about or something. I don't know, some weird. Anyway, it's a weird thing that I, I picture in my head when I'm thinking about this stuff, and so everyone has this certain combination, and when things head towards a certain direction mentally, in the way that we break apart information, there is a predisposition to be able to be gay. I think there is a certain mental predisposition that someone can be born with that makes it possible to be gay. And the thing that would make it be that way is the way that we categorize abuse and how we place our ideas when, how we viewed when we were a young child what it is to be masculine. And if we have these toxic ideas of what it is to be masculine, 
like in elementary school, this idea, this thing that just kind of comes up automatically, um, the bullies are looked at as uh, oh, those are the, the 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 manly kids. Those are the those are the alphas. Those are the you know. And you get in your head this thing that says, well, if you know, you get these people that you're being treated like shit. Uh, over these are the people that are supposed to be masculine and eventually either on a subconscious level or a conscious level one says well if that's what being masculine is I don't want anything to do with this now it's not saying that again it, it's not necessarily a conscious thought it could be like a reaction just a, a natural defense and so if there are too many situations like that that occur or someone gets abuse from their father, or they had no father and they're grasping at straws as to what it means to be masculine. I think that right there, with the certain type of, of, of you know brain arrangement of, and the way that the information is processed, those things together is what makes someone gay. And so, there are some things that a lot of gay people seem to have in common as far as thinking patterns. And when you think about it, you know, so many people gravitating towards the same things and not necessarily based off of the, uh, you know, stereotypes or peer pressure. There are, there are just certain modes of thought that just seem in common with a lot of gay people. There are a lot of things that I can describe to another gay person and I barely have to say any, any words, and bam, they understand already. They, they know exactly where I'm coming from, immediately. There's lots of things like that between gay men. And we come from all backgrounds. And I find that interesting. But it makes it a lot of work to try to figure out how to word things in ways that those who are not gay will understand. And I know, I know that sounds like, it, it's, oh, you're making extremes. It, 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 things can't be that much different. Well, I think it kind of is. Unfortunately, when I think about this stuff, I also think about how, well, let's just say all the different elements to how genetics affect the way we think. So, I mean, this could even include race. There are these I, I don't know what to call it, brain arrangement, you know, like a, someone has a key right here. And just because someone is of a certain race doesn't mean they're going to automatically have, you know, this certain configuration. It's just percentages, percentages of, you know, on, on average, these things are more common, right? That's the unfortunate thing that that starts to make me think about. and. That is an area that you're just, you're, we're basically not allowed to think about. Okay, if there's anything that we are not allowed to think about, it is that. Just to think about that is considered racist, highly racist. It's like, no, we can't even entertain that thought. That's what is pushed. I mean, like strong, like like no, you cannot say this. And so these 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 things that I've been talking about lately, you know, um, in uh, shaming certain mindsets that has gotten us to to be kind of peaceful, and having sort of a wake up call as to well, yes, there are a lot of really really good people out there, but there are still realizing the percentage of how many people actually are bigoted. I'm not talking about the people that are, uh, uh, that I've been having discussions with here. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to say there's a very particular demographic that does this because I, I can't really describe it. Let's just say there, there's a percentage of people and, and, that, and I, I'll leave it there. And, and I, I don't know what the correct label to give. There, I don't think there is a correct label. It's just, it, it would be hard to even give it a, a, a reasonable description of that demographic. I mean, besides, I, I, obviously besides the KKK, uh, 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 white supremacists, Nazis, you know, it, it, besides that, right? There was one point where I was talking about how 
I think what would change so much is if we could not hide if we we were we lived in, something happened and all it's it's there's a something that there's a something in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy these beings that they had to fill their mind with with a bunch of of uh, other stuff in order to keep others from intercepting their thoughts if we had uh telepathy that we can't turn off so everyone just knows what everyone else is thinking in the end something like that could be very beneficial to us and i would think about you know what are the the negative ramifications of that and you know i'm just seeing a very small sliver of that right now in our culture with the way that things are changing and it's not it's that it's not changing as much as it feels like it's changing um what's being seen is the truth of what of the variety of uh, the uh, the diversity of culture in this country and I've had in my head this element and I think a lot of gay people a lot of people in the LGBT community had this thing in our, in, in our heads of if there's some sort of a generic okay. scale to describe you know open-minded and bigoted that there are a lot more people who head towards that bigoted side in this country than I had thought in my head previously. And then a lot of LGBT thought previously. Or a lot of us kind of knew, but since it was never talked about, we could just kind of, we could, we could just sort of imagine that everyone is, is, that everyone is open-minded. Like, you know, watching the end of Tu Wang Fu. There were obviously a lot of open-minded people. Obviously a lot, I mean, just tons, lots. But there are the ones that aren't. And we're going to know the ones that aren't. And yes, I understand there are some good things about knowing the ones that aren't, because then we know more of who we're dealing with, but it is terrifying. And all I want to do, I mean, it's the very, it's, it's, this is, this is what's messed with me so badly is all I want to do is just go back in time. I just want, I want to go back in time, like, like two years. Let's just go back in time two years. Let's just, you know, cool. Just, just go back to there. And there wasn't to where I could still kind of pretend that there are fewer closed minded people than there actually were. A lot of us have known in the back of our minds, again, I think most, I'd say all of us, virtually all of us have known that there are more bigoted people out there than what we would like to believe. A lot of us have, have, have really, really wanted to believe that things were more utopic. We've really wanted to believe that. And unfortunately, some people in the LGBT community have really went too far in expecting people to become exponentially more open-minded. Like, like it's not supposed to be like, you know, this through time, right? Someone just becomes more open-minded, you know, as time goes on. But this, what's expected is, no, you're supposed to go like this. But uh, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's like this. This is how it works. Now, some people can become more closed-minded as time goes on. And that's when you get the whole get-off-my-lawn types, right? <laughs> um, and I don't want to become someone that becomes more closed-minded in time. A lot of LGBT right now are scared that we won't get the crucial support that we're going to need potentially in the near future. Potentially. I'm not going to say that we, it's absolutely the case, but very potentially. I guess sometimes it, 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 it will feel to many like uh, a lot of people making these statements are the same thing as someone saying, I'll pray for you. And, and the more that, that we see people saying, well, all of these things are, are, are any of these reports of this stuff happening is fake. And then even more so when people will say, 
well, we don't care if they say words. Uh, physical actions are the only thing that matters. Oh my God, that, that hurts so bad when people say that. That hurts. That hurts. For many of us, that feels like you're saying that you won't, you, you're not going to support us unless we're being killed. Like you're not going to do any, lift a finger to help us unless we're being thrown off of buildings. So when the LGBT community hears straight white cisgender males complaining about being so oppressed, some of us kind of have this idea, of, this attitude of, well, welcome to the club. How does it feel? And that is within me as well. I must admit, that is in within me as well, but I have to be, I have to be empathetic because the straight white uh, cisgender male demographic, generally people in that demographic, have never had to experience anything like that. So it's going to feel really, really horrible. And I have to remember that. But there is that thing within me that I have to push back regularly. But some people don't. Some people are like, well, you don't care about my feelings. Why the fuck should I care about yours? A lot of people have taken uh, uh, that attitude. And that's one of the problems that I'm also seeing with this, this attitude that's coming up. Well, if you don't, again, if you don't care about my feelings, why should I care about yours? So one of, to me, that's one of the worst ways that we could become as a society. I mean, there are places we have, there are geographic regions that have that mindset more than, than others. When they start to have that mindset, it just, it just goes downhill from there. When someone gets the mindset of, well, you know, why do, why should I care about your cis white, uh, 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 male feelings? And that's really unfortunate. And you know what? It's very easy to get into that mindset. It's so easy. Again, when I, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's an autumn, it's, it's another automatic reflex. It's automatic response. You know, we've been going through this for so long. We've been experiencing all these things for so long. And you're just experiencing a sliver of, of, of what we've experienced all of our lives. And you're going to get all whiny about it. That element goes through people's heads. And the answer, the answer to why you need to care about that is, well, if we expect others to care about our plights, then we need to care about theirs. I mean, this is like, take someone raised in a very religious family and they've done everything perfectly, but they don't, you know, and, want, and they don't allow the child to really go out and do anything. They keep them from the internet. They keep them from all this stuff. Then suddenly they turn 18 and the parents are like, well, get out, go on your own. And then suddenly the person has to deal with all this shit that it, you know, should be not really much of a thing. But for this person, um, there's a whole shit ton of things they, they now have to suddenly look at and learn. And I think that is what is occurring with uh, the straight white male demographic. Us in the, in the LGBT community cannot just act like, well, it's just another thing. No, no, it's not just another thing for, for that demographic. It's, it's not. This is extreme for them. This is like, holy shit. The very worst thing that we can do is treat that demographic like shit. That's the worst thing we could possibly do. And so after all this time of these past, probably about five years, of straight people starting to become uncomfortable with LGBT people because they're wondering, well, are they going to judge me for this? Are they going to judge me for this? Are they going to judge me for this? What if they judge me for this and then uh, tell other people about it? And uh, what if they suddenly think I'm bigoted? What if people think I'm bigoted? What if people think I'm racist? What if I am racist? What can I do? What if I am homophobic? What can I do? Well, I've I keep trying to be the, to do the right thing and and uh you know how can I and, and these, these sorts of things would go through will go through people's heads I I just I, I it has to go through some people's heads and that's one of the other things that I have to look at with this this is another reason why I'm I'm fearful for bashing I know that facing a number of things head on 
is often the best way to to tackle a problem. And so there might be some benefits to what is happening, to this more blunt way that society looks like it's going to become. Maybe there are some benefits to it. As long as the government doesn't get just completely fucked up and we lose uh, uh, social programs, we lose a decent education and it starts to go all privatized and shit. As long as the country doesn't get completely fucked up, at least on a social level, maybe maybe what we're about to go through is will make us much stronger in the end. Stronger, more uh, united after this sort of initial turmoil. The turmoil could last quite a while, or maybe it won't last that long, and we'll realize pretty quickly that, hey, uh, we don't like the direction this is going, what, what, are, the, what are answers to this, but whatever. I, I think in the end, we have the potential, I and mean, if we survive anyway, we have the potential to be stronger. You know, there's another side to this too, is the gay ca- A lot of people could end up becoming more segregated. And I guess that there are elements to that which were kind of nice back in the 80s and 90s when it comes to the gay community is, well, we had our own areas. We had definitely had our own areas. And, um, and just about every big city had, had you know, uh, had their own areas, own, own gay little sections. You know, maybe there could actually be a gay culture again instead of this strange attempt to try to integrate and then not and then nobody seems happy with that integration well not nobody there is obviously people that are are happy with it but there's the satisfaction level isn't nearly as high as it uh should be for what integration should feel like so you know i try to look at the positive sides to uh, multiculturalism which kind of allows for that type of thing this sort of thing might be this that we're about to deal with might be our our ultimate crash course in us being able to handle multiculturalism. Maybe this will be a crash course in that. Maybe all of us could learn something out of out of this. So who knows? Trying to look at this positively. So 